I gotta get this thing fired up. I get to take my mask off. <coughs> Okay. Whew. Thank you, Mr. Chapman, for this opportunity to address Brooks students on a Monday morning. We'll go with the first slide, guys. <laughs> so I'm always looking for math in the world, and I saw this. I think the caption is prime beef. <laughs> you guys all know what a prime number is? So it's customary for me to show a picture of me as a kid. This is uh, the Westlake Wildcats, 1972. There's my dad in the top right. My brother is number 65 in the top, about four down from my dad. And I'm the water boy. <laughs> so I've been at this football thing for a long time. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The phone rang one day this spring, and a voice from the past was on the other end. You know it's a great friend when, despite not talking for a while, within about five minutes, time bends, and it's as if you never left. The conversation feels natural, and a smile grows as we just jump back into a time where the world was your street. It meant a lot to me that a friend from home made the effort to call it the news that Coach Carr passed away. Alan and I first met in the fifth grade when I moved from Agoura, California to Laguna Hills in the OC. His family lived down the street. We went to the same neighborhood elementary school. We played on the same youth football team during a time when you played sports with the kids in your neighborhood. We walked to practice and our dads were the coaches. In high school, we pushed each other to be our best on the field in a small school, which is a relative turn. It was, it was about 1,400 you know, for the whole high school. Although we seemed to never be in the same classes, we both played on the same sports teams. We both had other friends and often ran in different social circles, but we were the best of friends. After college, we were roommates. We backpacked throughout U Europe in the summer of 92. I moved to Denver the next year and, and we reconnected for our 10 year reunion in 1994. In 2000, we ran with the Bulls in Pamplona. That's where this was. Oh no, keep that picture back. This is in the stadium after we ran, I, we survived. <laughs> Fulfilling a dream born when we read The Sun Also Rises in Mrs. Rule's English class. This past summer we met in Del Mar with our friend Robert for a day at the races where the surf meets the turf. With COVID, it had been a few years since we had seen each other, but after a few moments we would slide into telling all the old stories. We seemed to laugh all day. I reflected on Coach Carr and his impact on us, how he called me meat, like a Salisbury steak, not a filet, he would say. <laughs> you guys know what Salisbury steak is? It's not very good. <laughs> the memories brought a smile to our faces. One of the best parts of being a teacher at Brooks School is being a witness to the, de to the development of these friendships while the bonds are being formed, in the classroom, in the dorm, on the field, in the dining hall, and in all the spaces in between. It was what I was hoping for when I took the leap and left a 25-year te 25 teaching career in public schools in California and Colorado. In my cover letter for a math teacher opening, opening address to John Hale in the spring of 2014, I appeal for an opportunity to be immersed in all aspects of student life, academic, athletic and residential. I have found the experience to be fulfilling. In my time here, I've, attained, I've attended many alumni events and have had the opportunity to talk with some about their time at Brooks. One thing that becomes abundantly clear is the importance of the, of the relationships that were developed during their time on campus that continue today on an ongoing basis. I love playing a small role in that for current Brooks students. That's you. I came across a Yiddish word that I first heard in an old movie, menschkite, the space between a handshake or a hug, the mortar, the thing that binds us. As I processed the passing of my beloved coach and the, rela and the, and the relationships that were formed on that field, 
I reflected on our friendship in the last 30 years. Alan and I had a lot in common and shared activities, but that wasn't it. It was the space between. It was during the downtime that our friendship was cemented. Navigating our social world, the music, the crushes, the heartbreaks, mimicking our coaches' pleas for us to make good decisions, getting together to study for tests, but not getting much done. It was the time a group of us ate 10 39 centers. That's a junior cheeseburger to you guys. From Burger King, in between two a day football practices to see who can keep it in their stomach. None of us did. <laughs> the things that football coaches did, did to players back then can only be called child abuse by, common, by today's standards. It was going to Denny's when we had exhausted all other options. It was trying to scare our friends at the Big S and Old El Toro Road, which is kind of an inside joke, which I won't explain. <laughs> it was all the things we did when there was nothing to do. Late night body surfing at Crescent Cove, playing intense games of risk, watching Monty Python's Holy Grail on VHS again and again and again. Brooks keeps his students pretty busy. Think of your schedule as the bricks, breakfast check-in, classes, activities, study hall, lights out, but it's in the space between, the mortar, when your connections are being made. Late in my teaching career, I really appreciate this element of boarding school life. At public school, I taught until three and then went home. Students got in cars and went on with their day. At Brooks, I'm a witness to these bonds being found, formed on most days. On the field of football practice, in the dorm when I find kids in each other's rooms studying, or just yucking it up in small groups after lights out. In that sweet spot between dinner and study hall with nothing to do, students are interacting in meaningful ways. Study groups in the library or in the coffee house or dorm common spaces, doing homework, and often not getting much done. I see kids being kids on the way to class, the dining hall, during meals, and before study hall. I see the mortar being formed every day and understand what we mean when we say the most meaningful education. Someday soon you will all graduate from Brooks, go to college, and begin your life in a new place. There will be weddings and families. Your friends will scatter fast. The friendships you're making now will last a lifetime. Stay in touch. And I don't mean social media stay in touch. Send a holiday card with a note every year, even if it's your only communication. Reach out. Even when life gets busy and complicated and time gets away from you, it's never too late to look someone up. Answer the phone. You never know who might be on the other end of the line and what it means to them that you will be there. Mensch kite. Thank you.